Hello, my name is Mark Amick, and I'm actually the group president for NextGen Communications Group within BCM1. And today I'm going to do a brief demo on our siptrunk.com website and portal. Uh, what you will find as a reseller when you're out searching for SIP trunking in the native searches at, in Google in the SEO field, you're going to see us come up number one and number two, um, always when you're searching for the keyword SIP trunking. And when you press on the uh, siptrunk.com link, this is where you will land on our website. There's lots of information about the product here, about explaining why you should partner with us, the features that are available, pricing, you know, FAQ, all those traditional things. We're not going to go through that today. Today, we're going to focus on the process of a dealer onboarding through our portal. So as you can see, we've done a great job of making the call to action very front and foremost. There's two big red getting started buttons right in front of you. And that's really to drive that dealer to make a decision and move on. As a matter of fact, when they go through their pages, the get started button is always there because we want to get them to that next step. So if we click on the get started button, it'll actually pop up a, um, a portal here, or excuse me, a login, if you will, that allows you to put in the information about you or your company. And again, this is targeted at dealers. So it's really not signing up for a account to purchase yet. It's trying to get that dealer information. So we're going to create one here and we're calling it, call it cascade um, com. And then for the email address, we'll use my email address. Um, I spell it correctly this time. Let's see, plus cascade, cascade 21 at siptrunk.com. Make sure that's right. Um, the phone number, we'll just use 404-596-4206. Oops, let's select that easy real quick. Um, and then your PBX choice. Um, really, this really doesn't do anything. It's just information gathering from us trying to figure out what people are actually utilizing, but it's not required. And then hit the, the CAPTCHA to make sure you're really not a robot. So click on that and then hit get started selling. And what it's doing now is it's actually going in our portal and actually creating an account for you. It's actually spinning up that account. It's actually creating a trunk for you that you can actually go in and make that. And if you were looking at my email over my shoulder right now, you'd actually see that login information actually came in and was actually connected. So I'm going to actually just copy that information real quick. And let's see here. And there's a link you could actually click on to open the browser, but I already have the tab open here. So we'll put in the, the, the uh, email address we gave there. And then I'll put in the password it supplied. Hang on one second and hit submit. And the first thing it's going to ask me to do is change that password because it sent me a temporary password, but I want to get a real one that belongs to me as the dealer here. So I'll come in and change this password. And now it's completing the setup of the system and setting everything up for you to actually utilize what you'll need to do to not only um, have a test account to work with, but also to go have the ability to actually um, create quotes for your customers and those type of things and manage your customers. So real quick, we'll click over here on SIP trunking and I'm gonna go there first because in our, in our dashboard here, what you're gonna see is there's actually a demo trunk. And this demo trunk was set up when the account was upgraded, when I did that sign up procedure. So there's actually a SIP trunk out there waiting for connectivity right now and actually gonna give you the ability to actually make and receive calls. So I'm gonna take that information in here, that's actually in here, the trunk number and the password. And I've actually got a, a uh, um, Bria cell phone here and I have to use the web to set up that Bria cell phone. So real quick, I'm just gonna make sure that information is updated in here. So we'll click that and we'll put it in here, put that there. And then we'll go back here to the demo and password. So I'll copy that real quick and come back here and we'll paste that in here. All right. So now we'll have this all set up and it's ready to go. So real quick. So if I go now grab my um, Bria cell phone and bring that over, what you'll see now is that trunk is actually connected. This is where Bria indicates it's green. And if I make a quick call to my line extension here real quick, just to make a quick call, we'll dial that real fast. And actually hit ring. If you can hear. Really quick, that's my desk phone ringing here beside me. So it actually is call is actually ringing and connected. I won't connect because we get a lot of audio feedback. But you can see that quick, it's up and making calls. So that's how fast we actually spin up a trunk that from that fast. There was everything was done. As a matter of fact, if I wanted to go in here, I could actually go in here and buy demo DIDs. We have certain DIDs that you can get, but you have to activate your demo account. But you buy those DIDs, and as soon as you buy those DIDs, they will be applied to your trunk. Right. 
right then and there. There's no waiting. It's all instantaneous. So if I buy a DID right now, if you will, a DID is a telephone number, it is up and working immediately. So there's no delay in setting it up. So that's how quick it is to spin up a trunk and get working on it. But again, this is focused basically on our customer base that's targeting resellers, right? So let's talk about the things that makes them excited because they all want to make money and make commissions. So real quick, I'm going to go in here and create a new customer and I'll pick on um, somebody internal and use their name. So we'll pick one of our salespeople here and his company name is um, Josh's phones maybe. Um, and his email address will be, again, we'll use mine um, plus uh, Josh phone at ziptrunk.com. Um, address, we'll just make it real easy, 3005. Hopefully that will all populate real quick and everything else. So again, so now it's sort of set up. So now I've created this customer in here and I'm going to register. And the reason we need this information is that when we do all our billing and everything else for the customer, because we handle the billing relation between the end customer and ourselves, is we need all this for tax and regulatory purposes. So that's why we require the customer to put all this detail in here. So real quick, we'll go register. What you'll notice it come back and says, hey, we use the United States Postal Service to verify the address information is correct. And it may have found something different or whatever, but we, we say we always accept the changes and you're off and running is now creating that customer. So now I've gone in here and created this customer. It's in my account list for different customers I have. And I can actually go in here now and create a new order for the customer. So it's that simple. I'm already start buying stuff and putting on my customers. So when I come in here now, I can say, you know what? I want to set this up customer with a number of channels. They want, you know, let's say six unlimited call pass. And what that means is they get unlimited call pass in and out for six channels. So that's either six inbound calls, six outbound calls, three in, three out, whatever mix and match they have, they can have six calls up at any given one time. And again, even though it is unlimited, it's subject to our fair use policy. They could also buy a minute plan if they'd rather do it that way. The minute plan doesn't have a limit on the number of channels. It actually just uses minutes. And once they use their number of minutes, they go over. But we'll skip that for a minute. Let's say they want a toll-free package. So they do have a toll-free number that they want to purchase or may already have that they may port over. And they don't do a lot, but do a little bit. So they're going to buy a thousand minutes of toll-free. So we're setting all that up. They also are going to need some DIDs. They may have these DIDs already, or they may be ported over. But let's just say that they need to buy um, 10 telephone numbers. Um, they also want to have 911 because everybody needs 911. But since they're in a small business in one location, they'll just buy one um, telephone number here. And again, they want to have a toll-free number, right? Set all those things up. So we also have fax solutions. We have a fax to email and a fax ATA solution, which can be used to existing fax machines. But we're going to skip that for right now. And then they can make an account deposit. And you're saying, well, what's the account deposit? Well, if you remember when I talked about these minute packages, once you go over that, you'll be unable to make additional calls until you, you, you have funds in your account to actually do that because everything on our system is prepaid. So they might want to put in $20 to come themselves. Also, if they make international calls, they need to have that in there because international, you can't really buy as a, a, you know, a plan. You have to always pay that by per minute. So they might put some money in there just to cover themselves for any overages they may have. So they hit review order and basically says, all right, here's everything that's going to be on your order. Here's all the charges. You know, here's all the federal charges that are going to be on there. Your USF, the recovery fee, those type of things will be involved with it. So this is what their first order would look like. And what it would say if we process this order today, roughly they would owe us $194. And the reason there's a proration here is that on SIP trunk, everyone's billing occurs on the first of the month. So we always prorate the invoices based upon that. So here we are today on the 12th. So we're prorating it minus 12 days because you know they've lost that many days in the month, Indo said. So this is ready now to be shipped to the customer. So I come down here and say, great, I want to print. I, I can't do anything. There's no, I can't select anything. I can modify. These buttons aren't selectable. Well, in big red down here, it says demo accounts do not allow for the creation of customer orders until the partner agreement has been signed. So over here on the left-hand side, you may have seen it. It says the SIP trunk partner agreement. And it's also a link to here. This is required before they can actually process the orders. And it's a very straightforward. It's done through hello signs. So if we click on here to go to there, it's basically going to ask for all the information in here. Now, when the dealer signed up, they didn't give me their address, right? If you remember that early form, I didn't get any of those type of things that they actually had set up. So let me come in here and put back in the right address. Um, Cascade. 
21 at siptrunt.com, right? So I didn't have that information. So now I got to get that information from them as well. Um, I have to get their taxpayer ID. Um, we don't really have one right now, so we'll just make one up. And what type of corporation they are. We need that for 1099 filings since we're going to be paying them commissions. We have to have that. Um, so maybe it's an individual, so whatever it may be. And then we hit submit. Same thing here. It's going to go check the address of the United States Postal Service, right? So um, we're going to send that out real quick and hit submit or real quick. It's going to submit all the information in. And now it's completing the agreement. Now, the agreement, our agreement is very much non bonding on siptruck.com. It basically says, you agree to sell it, we agree to pay you. There's lots more in there that are required by lawyers for T's and C's, but there is no minimum commitment required from them. Um, it actually doesn't matter if they sell one customer with one line or they sell a thousand customers. Um, their commission will change based upon it. Our standard commission is 15% for anything less than $10,000 of MRC revenue are 18% once they get over that. That's our standard terms uh, terms and conditions. And as long as this customer is with us, they will be paid commissions on that. So real quick, we'll get started. You can see it filled everything for me. If I wanted to, I could print this out and read it. So we'll say my title is um, Prez and click the sign. And I don't like typing my name. So we'll see, insert there. And pretty much I'm done. So you can see I've completed all fills, continue. I agree. And so basically it says your agreement's been sent off to us. So now somebody over at SIP Trunk Corporate is actually reviewing that agreement to make sure it came in there. So there's another email that came to me right now. And I'm actually going to um, come in here and approve that. So um, let's see real quick, because I got to log in. So this is what it looks like on the backside. So real quick, I'll say get started. You can see that's where I signed it. So I'm just going to come in here and sign it real quick. Sort of strange and I'm signing for my own name. So we'll sign that. All right, now come in here and insert and continue and I agree. So basically now that customer agreement's actually been signed. So if we come back over here now, oops, back over here into their dashboard and see things. If we refresh this, the SIP trunk partner agreement is gone away. See, it's no longer down there in the bottom. I still have the customer out here, right? So um, there's a couple of things it tells you, but let's go back to the customer real quick. So if I go back to Josh now, there's not any orders because of course we were just playing with it, doing a demo for. So now if I go create that order, right? I come back and do the same things I did earlier. We'll select six channels, a thousand minute plan, some DIDs, doesn't really matter. Um, one, um, let's say uh, one toll free DID, I think I did, and then $20, right? So review order. Now, when I get over here, you can see that little red button. The text is gone down here. I have lots of things I can do. I can print a quote, which gives me a PDF to be able to do it. I can email the quote, which basically says it'll send it from our system to the customer as a PDF, or I can send the order. So what this means is print might be, I want to put in a proposal. So just give me this a PDF and I'll bundle in some other things I'm providing the customer as a dealer. Email means you want to send it to the customer for them to look at, make sure they're good. But once they're ready to go, you can click send order. And now it sent that order to the customer and it's waiting on them to approve it. Because as I mentioned earlier on in the presentation, um, we actually own the billing relationship for the customer because we handle all the taxation, everything else, we pay commissions. So the customer has to go in and supply us their credit card information. So they have a portal that looks just like this. They log in that they'll do what they'll put in their portal information and control everything else. But that has to be done for them because we own that relationship to protect that customer's billing rights, right? But pretty much that's how easy it is for the dealer to do it. The customer just confirms the order. At that point, their trunks are up and ready and they can go in and buy DIDs. And when they go buy DIDs, this is what a, they see from the point of view of a, um, um, a dealer. If it's a customer, the view is a little bit different because a dealer can have multiple customers here, but they could go in here and actually purchase DIDs when it's all up and running. So they'll be able to pick it. So if I want to go buy DIDs, what they can do is search for DIE. So if they wanted a standard telephone number and you know, we start with Georgia, the reason we started with Georgia is because it was based upon their address, but they can say, you know what? I want to find numbers in Florida. Um, I want numbers in a certain area in Florida. So maybe I'm going to try to get them in the 407 area code, which is in the Orlando area. And I'll pick Orlando and see what's available. So I can come in here and actually now try, you know what? That's the telephone I want. I want as a standard number or I want an enhanced. 
And so when I select that number, because now I've actually picked that number, when I select it in here, um, you can see there's loads of numbers they can choose from that we can make those type of numbers they can address. But now that number will actually be added to my tally of things I want to be able to do that. Now we're in search only right now because the customer hasn't put in their credit card because I'm not going to that part of the demo right now. But if they had put in here, they'd actually be able to select these numbers, apply them and charge into their account. So once they go in and buy the DIDs, we actually then apply them because they actually would have pending number of DIDs because they ordered seven. They would come here and now actually do that. But since they didn't put their credit card information here, I can't actually purchase the DITs without how easy it'd be able to set and modify. And the same thing, the dealer can come in here and go and modify the CDR. So let's go back real quick just to show you what that looks like. Go over here to the dealer um, capability. This is where you can actually see what a CDR looks like, right? What's going on as far as calls in and out of the type of things. So it gives you the real time performance of calls that may be you know, set up in the system that are actually running and working. So be available. So that same type of information be available on the individual customer accounts as well. And if they had multiple customers, there'd be a list down here and they could select these customers in here and go in and actually view the same information on each individual customers. So real quick, that's just a high level overview of how a dealer would come to Siptron, sign up, actually get their account activated. As you can see, it didn't cost the dealer anything. The dealer at this point, I've never put their credit card information in, anything like that. The only other thing the dealer would want to do, which for sure, and it tells you anything, is we always look about, there's two important things. One is commissioning bank information. They want to put this in because this tells us where we're going to send their money to, right? So these are a couple of things we tell them to do. The other thing we tell them we want to make sure is branding. Because when their dealer logs in, they may want it to be a different um, logo than what our logo, right? So if they want to go use their own logo here, let's see if I can get to my um, to -do -do images here. We'll use that one All right in here and upload image. All right. So now you can see this is the logo up here. It changed some sit trunk. Hopefully you saw that. But now when the customer logs into their portal, that's the logo they're going to see. They're not going to see sit trunk. So technically it's white labeled for them. Any correspondence that goes out, we we'll actually use the information since in here. You can see it's Cascade Communications. You know, if this would be their real address versus one I made, but it gives them the ability to sort of white label all that information so the customer sees it. If the customer gets a copy of their invoice, the only thing they see on the bottom of, in mouse print is it says SIP trunk is the carrier of record, and that's required for regulatory purposes. But the rest of the, the logo is all going to be their logo. All communications will come from that dealer type of things. And the dealer is basically tier one support, tier one billing, everything else, and they escalate everything else from that point. Um, we will support any customers that call us directly, but we encourage them to go through the dealer to be able to make sure that dealer maintains a relationship and extends it further. But as you can see, it's a very straightforward, easy to use portal that's set up to make it life very simple for our dealers to set up and actually do things. Uh, most dealers could come in here and do this without talking to us, but we do have salespeople that actually onboard each dealer to make sure we walk through and train them um, to be able to set up and actually um, walk through our portal with ease and add customers in here. But they will start as soon as this customer is activated and their build within the next basically 45 days which will occur on the next commission cycle, they'll actually start getting commissions paid out. But again, this was just meant to be a very high level overview of the SIP trunk portal. Um, that again is targeted after our dealer channel and how easy it is for them to onboard directly from the web. If you have any questions, please feel to reach out. We'll be glad to answer them.